Uh, vitamins and supplements, how to choose what's best for you. Uh, I won't go into his talk, because he's going to talk about it. I just want to give a little background on him. Uh, he holds BS and MS degrees in computer science from the New, uh, New Jersey Institute of Technology. In 2011, he graduated honors from the National University of Health Sciences in Lombard, Illinois, with his doctorate of chiropractic degree. And during his chiropractic education, he joined the research department as a research assistant and was eventually accepted into a research fellowship on the strength of his science background and laboratory experience. He also seems to be well versed in uh, computer information. He set up his program tonight, so that was helpful. On, on the semi techie, so it was helpful when somebody's a techie knows what's going on. Anyway, without further ado, let me present Dr. Robert Press. Dr. Press? Welcome. Thank you for, for coming out tonight. I have most, uh, a lot of friends, some, uh, some new faces, so I really appreciate you all being here. Um, tonight we're going to be uh, having a really, I hope, very interesting presentation. We're going to be talking about vitamins and supplements and uh, how to read the labels, how to know what's actually in the vitamins and supplements that you're taking. And um, we're going to be um, talking about what's absorbable, what's not, so what's worth spending the money on if you're going to be buying. Do you want the lights off? I think we'll be okay. Yeah, okay, okay. good. Okay. Um, can everybody see the, uh, the presentation all right? Yeah. Uh, next slide. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to just briefly disclaim, I'm not uh, giving uh, medical advice in this presentation, anything that you do learn in this presentation is purely for informational purposes. And um, I, don't, I do not advise that you start or stop any supplements or drugs or anything that you may be taking without consulting with your healthcare provider, whether that's me or, uh, or, your, or your, uh, your other doctor. Next slide, please. Okay, so what we're gonna be talking about this evening is uh, three main points. We're going to understand that there are different forms of nutrients. There's not just one of each thing. And that they're different. Um, some of them are absorbable and bioavailable, and that means available to the cells of the body when we take them. Uh, some are more absorbable than others. And we're going to sort of talk about which ones are worth purchasing and which ones aren't. Next slide, please. Okay. I just wanted to go through a few definitions because I'm going to be using some words that might not be familiar. Um, just very briefly, a vitamin is a substance that's necessary for life. Without, uh, without taking in this particular substance or any of these various substances, you will die. So it's important to take them in in your diet or through supplementation. A vitamin is a form of that vitamin. Some vitamins have more than one form. Some are more absorbable than others, and those are each of those forms called a vitamin. I'm going to just briefly use that term. Metabolism, we're going to talk about metabolism of a substance. Metabolism is the process of breaking down food or a drug or a supplement or, uh, or, uh, uh, or vitamin. The storage of excess energy from that food and the retrieval of that energy later. So if we're breaking down carbohydrates, they get stored as fat, and when we need them, we can retrieve them from the fat and some fat energy. That's metabolism. Okay, um, for those of you who are uh, a bit chemically inclined, we're gonna be talking about acids and bases a little bit. Most people are familiar with the idea of an acid, things like vinegar or lemon juice or both acidic. Um, and uh, just, I just put the definition up here. Um, let's go to the next slide. And uh, a base, something like lye, most people are familiar with it as drain cleaner, that's a very strong base. Um, sodium uh, carbonate, which is, I'm sorry, calcium carbonate, which is the most common, unfortunately, form of calcium supplement on the market. It's slightly. You say unfortunately? Unfortunately, I'm going to show why. In this presentation, we're going to demonstrate why that's a problem. Um, it is the most common form of calcium supplement on the market. And it's also the least absorbable. Um, okay, and the salt is the union of an acid and a base. That's a pretty accurate definition, good enough for the purpose of this presentation. Something like sodium chloride, table salt, that most people are familiar with. Um, we're going to actually be creating a salt here as a demonstration. 
Um, okay, free radicals and antioxidants. A free radical is a substance that is unstable, and nothing wants to be unstable. So in order to make itself stable, it reacts with other things. Free radicals are very reactive, and they react with anything that's available to them. And what happens is that in reacting with something else, it makes the other thing unstable. And this continues, and it's a chain reaction. Um, an antioxidant is a substance that stops that. It reacts with the free radical and stops that chain reaction from going on. Next slide, please. Okay, so going back to vitamins. We're going to be talking about vitamins, all of the vitamins, there's several of them. And we're going to be talking about most of the important minerals that we need. A vitamin is defined as a substance that's necessary for life. Some of them are made by the body. Um, vitamin D is a big example. We make vitamin D in response to sunlight, when we're exposed to sunlight. Um, and so strictly speaking, um, a vitamin is a substance that's necessary for life and that the body does not manufacture in sufficient quantity that you have to take in in your diet or through supplementation. Uh, so vitamin D kind of hangs on the edge of that a little bit, but it's, it's a vitamin for the purpose of this presentation. We're going to be talking a bit about CoQ10, which is, meets all of the requirements for the definition of a vitamin, but hasn't been formally recognized as a vitamin. Um, each, has, each vitamin has a different disease that's associated with its deficiency. And each one, something like scurvy, most people have heard scurvy with relation to pirates, because it's very common, and oh, I use scurvy dog. Well, that, that's because pirates uh, did not get necessary amounts of vitamin C in their diet. And so it used to be that pirates would bring limes on board with them to eat the limes in order to get enough vitamin C. That's why pirates are sometimes called limeys. Um, and most vitamins come in more than one form. Some of the B vitamins come in single forms. Um, let's move on. Um, so there's multiple different kinds of vitamins. Um, we have uh, fat-soluble and water-soluble vitamins. Uh, fat-soluble vitamins are vitamins A, D, E, and K. So there's four of them. Each of them has more than one form associated with them. Um, CoQ10 is also, to some degree, fat-soluble, so we're going to be talking about that as well. And because they're fat-soluble, that means that they're, they're held in the body's fat reserves. So when they're absorbed, that's where we store them. And so we store them in such a way that they could potentially build up to toxic levels if you take too much of them. That's called a hypervitaminosis. We're going to be talking about that for each individual vitamin. Next slide, please. Yes? I see that. Sure. Most of this information is in the uh, brochure that I have. Next slide. Okay, so let's talk about vitamin A. Vitamin A comes in a whole lot of different forms. Um, vitamin A is responsible for healthy skin, nails, hair, and eyesight. Eyesight is the big one. When you start to become deficient in vitamin A, you start losing your eyesight. Welcome. Come on in. Um, vitamin A is necessary for the uh, ability to see. And so what happens is that when we start to develop vitamin A deficiency, which actually does happen in our modern society, um, you start to, first you, lose, you first you lose the ability to see at night. Night blindness is one of the first signs of vitamin A deficiency, which is followed by total blindness. And that can be solved by vitamin A supplementation. Um, the uh, vitamin A comes in a lot of different forms, retinol, retinol, retinoic acid, retinol palmitate, retinol acetate. Um, it also uh, is available as carotenoids. The most common one is beta carotene. Most people are familiar with beta carotene. It's what makes, that's what makes carrots orange. Okay? Uh, beta carotene is actually two molecules of vitamin A combined together. And uh, let's go to the next slide. So um, there's a few notes about vitamin A. So retinoic acid, which is, it's a kind of uncommon form to encounter vitamin A in, but some supplements do have it. Vitamin A in this form of retinoic acid is what's called a teratogen. It's a substance that's known to cause birth defects. So we do not recommend that pregnant women take 
retinoic acid. Um, beta carotene is what's called a provitamin. That is to say, it's a substance that is not a vitamin, but it's converted to the vitamin form when needed. So the body stores it, it does not become toxic, um, but the, the side effect of too much beta carotene is that you look like you're from the show Jersey Shore. You turn orange. Um, it's called carotenosis, it leads to orange skin. And it's purely cosmetic, as far as we know, there are no other health uh, side effects from carotenosis. Um, but so, so we recommend that for most people, if you're going to take a vitamin A supplement, that we you take beta carotene, there's almost no way to get yourself in trouble with vitamin A. Vitamin A is one of is really the only fat-soluble vitamin for which there's a really well-defined toxicity for taking too much, hypervitaminosis A. The, the, the best way to do that is to eat polar bear liver. Eat what? Polar bear liver. If you eat polar bear liver, you will probably die from vitamin A toxicity. Mm -hmm. So don't do that. <laughs> um, but vitamin A, it is possible to overdose on. Uh, so if you're going to take vitamin A, we do recommend you take a beta carotene form. It's converted to A as needed, and there's really no toxicity associated with it. Next slide, please. Rob, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. Is the retinol that you're speaking about the same kind of stuff that they put in face cream? Or yes. Do you absorb it through your skin? Then? You do to some extent. The, the really, uh, the, the topical forms of it are formulated so that you do absorb them, but really very superficial. Okay, sorry. No, that's fine. Uh, um, okay, vitamin D. This is my favorite vitamin because it's involved with like everything. Vitamin D is involved with calcium metabolism. Okay. Vitamin D is involved with the immune system. <coughs> vitamin D is involved with um, uh, with a whole lot of things. There's two forms that are really available on the market. There's D3. That's what you're most likely to encounter if you go seeking your own supplementation. And there's D2, which is called ergocalciferol. And that's most commonly encountered as prescription vitamin D. If you go to your medical doctor, you're vitamin D deficient, they're most likely to write you a prescription for 50,000 units of vitamin D2 which is a little bit illogical, actually, because D2 has to be converted into vitamin D3 to have any use anyway. Um, and vitamin D3 is absorbed better. So if you take D3, it's okay? Yes. Yes, and that, that's the most common form of the market. Yes? Um, on the dots, you know, they sell dots and they help food stores. Are they as effective as um, pills, taking pills? It depends on how on how the what the absorption is. If it's something that's swallowed, the absorption is going to be less than if it's something. No, they say just leave it on your you tongue. You put it under your tongue. Put it, putting something under your tongue is a very effective way to get it right into your bloodstream like that. Um, so a lot of vitamins are sometimes encountered as sublingual tablets. You put it under your tongue and it's absorbed. It goes almost right into the bloodstream. The reason for that. Is, has to do with the anatomy of the mouth. There's a lot of veins running right out of the mouth. <coughs> so if you just leave it on your tongue? Um, well, if you put it under your tongue, some things are meant to be put under the tongue, some things are meant to be swallowed. It depends on the individual form of what, what, what type of vitamin okay, D Okay, so you're just asking if you put it on the tongue, not under the tongue. If you put it on the tongue, most things? That's, these dots, I have, I have two different forms. I take vitamin D and uh -huh. um, B. In the dog form, and they both, you know, say just put it on your tongue, mm -hmm. and just let it, you know, dissolve there. Yeah, then that, then that form. Because it's so tiny, right? I wonder whether it has the same efficacy as that. Um, well, it's, it's actually quite possible to, to have an enormously concentrated vitamin D in a very tiny tablet. Because what you see with most pills is that most of the pill is actually binders, things that hold the right. pill together rather than. The substance that you're actually having delivered to your body. Um, next slide. Please. Um, the vitamin D plays a role in calcium metabolism. So if you take calcium and you don't take vitamin D, your calcium isn't really going anywhere. Um, vitamin D works with vitamin K to help put calcium into the bones, as opposed to absorbing the calcium and then putting it in your arteries where it causes hardening of the arteries and arterial plaques and eventually heart disease. Um, it's involved with immune system function. So vitamin D, briefly, what it does is vitamin D promotes a type of um, white blood cell, 
which is a kind of 